Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo Franchise Mode Let's Play. We're diving right back into Elite Zoo North with a lot to get done today. We are again a little behind schedule, so to speak, uh, just because of our minor delays in the past, so I'm very eager to get as much done as quickly and as efficiently as possible, but of course without sacrificing quality and aesthetic and beauty. You know, quality and quantity. We all know how that balance is, uh, is best, right? Um, just want to mention as we dive on in, folks, as always, if you've been enjoying this series and you would like to see it continue, please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. It always makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel. It lets me know what y'all are interested in seeing more or less of, uh, and it directly affects my scheduling and my just overall planning in general for the channel. Now, those of you that enjoy exploring some of the other content on this channel, uh, I did actually kick off a brand new Let's Play uh, just yesterday, the second episode of it will be coming out today. It's for a new DLC coming out for Total War Warhammer 2. Some of you already know that I cover that game uh, relatively extensively. Uh, Total War Warhammer 1 was one of the things that really helped this channel blow up, so it always holds a special part, a uh, special place in my heart. Uh, so yeah, I kicked off a new Let's Play for a new DLC they're launching soon, so if you're curious to see something a little different, uh, there are many animals in that Let's Play. There are wolves and there are... Um, I mean, do ogres and trolls and stuff count as animals? Uh, so there's a little bit of a, a tie-in, I suppose. But overall, I just thought I'd share as we're uh, you know sitting in this loading screen. And look at that perfect timing as we fade into our beautiful, beautiful Elite Zoo North. It is nighttime. There is some management stuff to do as well. Uh, what I'm going to do is a little bit of management stuff I'll be doing on pause. Then we will quickly unpause, let the sun rise naturally rather than force the, uh, the sunrise. I, I like to keep that to a minimum if possible. And then hopefully we'll dive into a time lapse. Now, just as a reminder, uh, well, sorry, we'll definitely t uh, dive into a time lapse. I meant to say hopefully we'll dive into a time lapse sooner rather than later. Um, that's the plan, at least. Now, just as a reminder, today's time lapse is all about the beauty pass. What does that mean? That means we're going to try and sort this out finally and, and get it looking like we actually want it to look. Uh, hopefully I can get the terrain to play ball. I mean, that was causing us some issues previously, but uh, but I think we can solve that. And apart from that, we have a ton of uh, little changes here and there that we might, well, that we definitely want to try and get to, uh, including our uh, little pathing that we were doing, our, our wayfinding system that we were developing. You know, like I said, every, every once in a while, I might want to use a beauty uh, pass to chip away at it and make some progress at it. So we'll see if we can get to that today. And of course, there's also the topic of the sponsor boards. Lots of uh, lots of already sponsored animals are having more sponsors added to them. So we're going to do that. And there are lots of new opportunities as well. And what I really like about that as a, as a part of the beauty pass is it really, uh, <laughs> it's an opportunity to be creative in how those names get implemented. So I'm, uh, I'm excited to see uh, what other things we can come up with. But the first thing we're going to do on that kind of same or in that same vein, I should say, is uh, we only have a couple of new staff renames to do. So let's go ahead and uh, just get that done. Uh, again, if it was a, a ton of names, I would obviously edit it out and then go over the, the renames afterwards. But uh, it's only a couple of names, so we'll just do it live uh, because why not? I hope you all don't mind, and if you do, you know what to do. You know exactly where to put all the feedback. On which note, I just want to mention, y'all give some really good feedback. And, and, um... It's, it, it's always well-given feedback. Like, it, it, I always see a lot of apologies, like, hey, sorry, I don't want to be rude. And I have said this a, a couple times before, but I just cannot express enough how much I appreciate uh, the dedication and the quality of feedback that I get in the comments. Honestly, <laughs> it's great. And I'll touch more on that in a moment. We're going to go ahead and rename our friend over here to be um, Lena Raffley. Lena Raffley. Uh, again, I apologize if I'm butchering any pronunciations. I hope I got that right. So there you go, our latest security guard, our latest named security guard. And then we have one that uh, was sort of a, a wild card with regards to what kind of a role. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get another named keeper. So Veronica York, let's get you leveling up to five as well. I should really just get everybody leveling up because there's no reason not to, especially our vendors. But Veronica York, you will be renamed to... Uh, well, I think I, yeah, Ashley, I was, was typing the uh, pronunciation guide out, uh, Ashley Hauka, again, I do apologize if I messed that up, uh, very kind of you to provide me with a pronunciation guide when you, when you requested the, the name and, uh, <laughs> insertion, so hopefully I didn't butcher it despite that, uh, but yeah, so that's all of our, uh, 
Again, a big thanks to all the you know channel members and patrons who really help. Oh, hello. <laughs> There's our little camera hack as well. Um, um, I need to come up with a name. There we go. Um, a big thanks does go out to all the channel members and patrons who have been supporting this channel on a monthly basis. Uh, I normally reserve that to the end, but I thought it'd be nice to just kind of go over all the names we have added over here. Again, if you want to have your name in the staff list or as a sponsor for some of the animals, uh, just got to shoot me a private message on Patreon or let me know uh, in the comments of the you know first or second episode of a new month so no longer taking any more submissions if i missed yours i apologize i shouldn't have i've been very diligent on taking notes but youtube likes to throw things into spam even though they're very positive messages it happens all the time so i apologize do let me know uh because it's the least i can do anyway let's go ahead and do a couple of uh management things really quickly uh for example let's make sure our um where where is the red keep um, uh, I may have made a bit of a mistake over here, and I don't- oh, yes, I did. Oh, hello, what, what's happened over here? Oh, this is not- this is worse than I could have ever imagined. So we mistakenly sent Mingxia into the Red Keep, uh, where she should be in the, uh, Longclaw Armory over here, making a little- little armory delivery, I suppose. No, okay, we've got- oh, right, right, I, I keep forgetting that the game made this UI change. So we still have the, uh, <laughs> the red panda's in here as well, and I mean, what a what a time what a time to arrive here, right? Oh, they're so so cute. They're so cute. Oh, look at the oh my god, you're so tiny. Why do you look so sad? Oh, they're just so cute. It's just so so cute. Um, five and Tangi are both getting really old. In fact, are they too old? Are they are they rehome age? No, they're not. Okay, good, good, good. Um, sorry, there was one other thing I wanted to check. All right, I wanted to actually see. I completely got distracted by the cuteness there. I couldn't help myself. I wanted to see if they were, nah. It'd be nice to see how they interact with each other because just because animals aren't, um, so some animals get the benefit from, uh, I guess, cohabitation from sharing a space like the, uh, the bison and the antelope, right? Um, what's with that? What's going on? What is... That's definitely different, right? It didn't used to be like that. Okay, maybe I'm... Maybe I'm... Maybe I'm forgetting. Anyway. Um, right, so so animals like the, uh, the bison, for example, if we take a look at Zoopedia, just as a refresher, uh, they have the interspecies enrichment. Just... This isn't... Even if animals don't have interspecies enrichment, they can sh still share a space as long as they're compatible, like we were going to do with the rhinos and the elephants over in the India section. Um, but, you know, you don't want to mix things like tigers and bears, for example. Um, that would be a bad idea. Uh, nonetheless, the pangolin situation has been fixed. Thank you all for pointing that out. Complete mistake. Uh, don't know how it happened, but it did. Um, but it's fixed now, so that's that problem solved. The other thing I want to do while we're paused, because it'll be a little bit smoother, I think, is uh, up over here. Let's go ahead and turn the light on. I apologize if it's been a little dark. Hopefully it's clearer now. Uh, this was recommended in the previous episode, but it completely slipped my mind to actually execute on this. Uh, but we should get rid of these wooden panels. And this shouldn't take me too long to execute, hopefully. So I'm just going to try and do it in, in real time. And if it goes too slowly, I'll... Uh, I'll do it during the time lapse, but the suggestion was to get the plaster walls over here instead um, because they are non-climbable, right? And then also, it was suggested that we go ahead and make them uh, blue because it does... Uh, and it was something I was thinking early on, right? Like, we've got the blue paneling over here. Uh, it definitely lets it stand out a bit more. It feels like its own separate entity. Not <laughs> blue. There we go. Thank you. Uh, and while... The plaster and the wood certainly look different. I don't think it's bad. Yeah, I don't think that's bad. I think that works. I think that works. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and get this going. That's not the direction I want you to go. Well, let's get you going. All right, cool. Uh, so while I do this, I want to touch on the uh, extension to the tigers that we were working on and the feedback I got there. Uh, so this is what I was mentioning earlier. Um, so much just 
passion in the comments. I love it. I love that energy and keep it coming, folks. Uh, again, I see a lot of apologizing, like saying, oh, I don't mean to be rude or anything like that. And I want you all to rest assured that no one has been rude yet. I mean, there's always room for people to be rude, right? It happens uh, oftentimes as a mistake. No one's been rude yet. It's all been very positive vibes. And honestly, it's uh, like I'll be 100 percent trans uh, transparent. Uh, it, it, it can sometimes be, uh, I don't want to say disheartening, but it can certainly, it, it, it's an opportunity to check myself, right? It makes me go, oh, maybe I was wrong, uh, but that's not a bad thing necessarily, right? Like, we, we make mistakes so we can get better. And that's not just talking about Planet Zoo and video games, it's just talking about life in general, right? We make mistakes and we learn from them, uh, and mistakes can sometimes be as simple as not seeing uh, a bigger picture idea or an alternative, right? Um, there's this... Uh, Oh, one of the first things I wanted to get into, um, as far as the uh, art feels was concerned, was uh, game development and doing 3D modeling for games and stuff. And one of the first pieces of advice I got um, was uh, rather funnily worded. Uh, it was, don't marry your first girlfriend, which is kind of ironic considering my life circumstances. But uh, they say, don't marry your first girlfriend. It was this advice I got from this guy on this forum. Uh, an excellent forum that had a lot of professionals and stuff on it. And he was like, what I mean by this is your first idea just feels like the best idea because it's the only idea you've had so far. And I, I, I got that advice from this guy. It was well over a decade ago now. It uh, must have been 2005, 2004, 2003. Oh my God, it was a long time. 2005. Anyway. I can't remember. I might be off. I was in like, I was in the eighth grade, right? That was, I was pretty impressionable. Uh, and I thought that was funnily worded. The reason why I like it so much is because it is f like funnily worded. Uh, and it kind of like stuck with me. And I was like, huh. And obviously this applies in, in all directions. You know, don't marry your first boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Um, so, you know, feel free to modify it as it applies. But yeah, it, it basically means like, listen, the, 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 the first idea you have, you love it because it's the first idea you have. Uh, and once you have other ideas, you can maybe start to see how that first idea has some flaws uh, because now you love your second idea or your third idea or your fourth idea. Or maybe it turns out that first idea was great after all, and you can go back to it knowing that you've looked at some other ideas. Now, don't take this to be dating advice, folks. Don't take this to be life advice um, because, again, like I said, my real life has turned out <laughs> very differently compared to what that advice would suggest. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the point I'm trying to make in this long and arduous way as I multitask through the uh, repair work over here, the point I'm trying to make is I had the idea of the tigers running through the rivers at the back and I thought it was going to be super awesome. Uh, and I, 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 again, I fell in love with the idea and I was so hell bent on doing it. And then I saw the feedback coming in and most, if not all, well, definitely not all, but most of you, uh, had uh, had some great points about how it's not really suitable for tigers. Um, and the thing that makes the feedback in the comments so wonderful is that it always is constructive. There's always... Uh, now, you don't have... Feedback doesn't have to be paired with a solution, but uh, it's, it's, it's great when there is, like, potential alternatives being provided as well because it it gives me a platform uh, to jump off of and this this is life advice i would say uh how, how to give good feedback in just anything in general uh because now not only do i have a note of like hey this idea didn't really work but i have some potential solutions so i'm gonna throw them out to you so you know what i've seen in the comments because i don't expect everybody reads everybody else's comments but uh some of you for some of you this might be old news but for those of you that it's not the suggestions i've received include um, maybe split the tigers, the Siberian tigers enclosure into multiple enclosures. So have the, uh, temple shrine area, then have the, uh, river area, then have the Russian area. Uh, now that's, there are a couple of permutations of that feedback. One was this, you know, make it into three enclosures. One was to make it into two enclosures, uh, which is, you know, just the temple plus half the river and then... Uh, temple plus, sorry, Temple plus half the river, and then Ru half the river plus Russia. Um, I like those suggestions. The last time we did multiple habitats for a single animal, though, uh, people didn't really really care for that, and it was like, it was the rhinos, and it was the only animal that had that kind of treatment, so it did feel, uh, again, I liked the idea at first, but then on reflection, it did feel kind of, you know, 
Oh. Uh, uh, it, it, it felt like we were reaching for a solution. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it felt kind of like a, a shortcut method. And I obviously don't don't like that. Um, so that was... that was. Uh, it, it feels like we were going in that direction. Again, it, Again, it's not a bad suggestion at all. And if this zoo had been approached in a slightly different way from its foundations, then I would wholeheartedly take that uh, suggestion on. Uh, and, you know, it's still, it's, it's still open. It's still out there. That's why I'm having this conversation right now, right? Um, let's actually get rid of some of these, sorry. Uh, but the other suggestion, and this is the one I think that, this is where I meant to say most, if not all of you, uh, seem to gravitate towards this other suggestion, just based on the comments and seeing the likes and people saying things like, oh, I agree. Uh, again, folks, I, I read all the comments. Um, just through that, I was able to discern that most people would like the idea that I'm thinking of actually going with now, based on those comments which is um, make it for the wolves. Make it for the wolves. Uh, um, while tigers can only be two in an enclosure, wolves can have massive, massive packs. Uh, they can actually make use of all that space, and uh, guests will have a different uh, animal to look at in the Arctic area. Now, it does change our plans a little bit for where we were going to put the wolves originally, but, you know, I'm not averse to changing plans. That's the whole, that's the reason why I ask for feedback and I ask for your thoughts. It's so that you can have an impact. Uh, it's so that we can build a zoo, you know, together. We come up with ideas together, we execute them, and uh, hopefully they all work out, right? Um, so I, 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 I personally uh, like that idea a lot as well. And I think that is what we're going to execute. I, I think we're... Like, I'm almost confident. I don't know why I'm saying I think. I guess it's the... Uh, it's the honest way to put it, because who knows, my mind might change again. But as of right now, that's where I stand. That we're going to go ahead and build the... Um, the, the River Run area. I keep calling it the River Run area. We're so close to so many Game of Thrones references. Um... I'm, I'm going to make that into a, a wolf section. I think it'll be really cool to see the um, the wolves running around, uh, you know, with the water and everything. It, it, it'll be just as cool as it would have been with the tigers, uh, except the difference is that while the tigers, again, yes, we're limited to a, a small number in the enclosure. With the wolves, we can actually have a giant pack, you know, just taking over that part of the zoo. I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So excited. Now wait. All right, cool. Looks like we're good over here. Looks like we're good over here. That rant, that ramble lasted almost the exact amount of time I needed to. But in, all, in all honesty, though, I mean, I uh, I like talking about that kind of stuff. I like talking about uh, the um, feedback process, the creative process. It is, again, some of you know this already, but it, it's, uh, it's a remnant of my old career and my, you know, schooling and everything. So I, uh, it's, it's, it's topics of conversation that have a place in my mind and heart always so i like touching on that stuff actually another thing i want to touch on <laughs> fun facts uh i mentioned the uh the saying jack of all trades uh last session um so the the full saying is jack of all trades master of none uh but often still better than a master of one is the full uh saying it often gets shortened to jack of all trades master of none as a way to, uh, I guess, insult people that are, you know, a jack of all trades. But uh, that the, the full saying is actually, it goes both ways. And I love how many ways it can be cut. And in fact, on the topic of sayings that often get uh, horribly modified, uh, just another ramble while I just cap this off here. Um, one of my personal favorites is uh, blood is thicker than water. I almost said blood is thicker than wine. <laughs> um, blood is thicker than water right that's the yes uh blood is thicker than water is often said to imply that um family above friends however however plot twist the saying is actually the original quote is the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb which means the exact opposite <laughs> it is the exact opposite the blood of the covenant, as in, you know, quote-unquote brotherhoods made through blood pacts and whatnot, like, the, 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 the you know, the, the, like, the blood promises and stuff you make are more important than the water of the womb, as in the 
the, the, the place from which you were born and the brothers and sisters and everything and all the connections that come with it. Uh, so yeah, that is, that is one of my favorite, like, misquoted, misattributed, or however you want to put it, uh, sayings. Um, yeah, so the blood is thicker than water is actually, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Fun facts with, uh, with Party Elite. Um, yeah, that, that's gotta be my favorite. But also, <laughs> blood is thicker than wine is, um, might be... Just another thing to take into consideration. I kind of want to keep some of these red pieces because they do look nice. They do give us a nice tonal shift. You know, I'm actually going to bring these ones back. Uh, no, I guess we can't, right? Because we have to prevent their climbing. Because what I, another thing I'd like to do is actually move the glass as well. Um, and actually swap the glass out too. All right, let's, uh, wow. Try and get a, be a bit more efficient with this. There's only so many things I can ramble about, right? <laughs> Watch we do this for 15 minutes and the time lapse is like right at the end of this episode. I apologize if that happens, but I want to I wanna clean this up right here, right now. So it's, you know, done. Done and dealt with. Oh my, how many layers of climbing is there? Let's go ahead and get you back over here. The answer is lots. Perhaps even too many. Get you back over here as well. I'm... Fine with that. I'm fine with this being red. That's okay. Uh, and I guess, yeah, we got to get the inner ones figured out as well, right? Well, I say figured out, but I just mean done. Thankfully, that's just one piece. Hopefully, we're not breaking everything while doing that. We are not. Cool. Move you forward. Because then, yeah, this way, again, we can make the um, the enclosure feel a bit more uh, intimate with the... Um, uh, with, the, with the glass being pushed back and stuff. I guess we got to move up a little bit over here yeah or yeah i guess we got to pull this up a little bit fair enough there we go make sure it's not clipping through might have a little bit of clipping up there no it looks like we're good and another reason for doing this while paused is because uh just the frame rate so much smoother while paused so much smoother uh okay so this is good this is good we have you going to the end over here a little bit of clipping yeah should have known it'd be on the other side of this little dip. Oh, that's done there. A little exposed corner over here, which we can very easily solve. A matter of, oops, just a matter of rotation and placement. There we go. Are you clipping? You're not clipping. Good stuff. Still a bit of a gap over here. I mean, I don't know if it's yeah, it looks a lot nicer. I was going to say, I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it makes that much of a difference to the experience, but uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. All right, there we go. You know what? This uh, this time lapse might end up being closer to the end of the session. Huh? I apologize, folks. I'm sorry. This is uh, not, not the plan. It's not how it was supposed to be. Okay, we got the same problem over here. I mean, maybe maybe I should have just done this as, uh, as a time. I did not, did not, like a fool, did not think this would take as long as uh, it's ended up taking. Um, and this is, a part, you can see in action why, um, why I often end up saying after a time lapse, well, that time lapse took longer than expected. It's because, <laughs> because I always underestimate how long things will take, I guess. Let's merge all into a group. Almost done here, though. Like, with this far done, we might as well finish it, right? Let's go. Looks like we're good over here in terms of positioning. Maybe nudge it over a bit. And we'll fix the glass. Maybe next session. Um, I think we'll do that. Just so this entire session doesn't end up being about the tigers again. So let's see. We've got our... Left side. Far side. Right side. Even though I rotated the camera the wrong way. Your left to do. Go ahead and sort that out. There we go. Actually. Pull this over. It's the right length and stuff, right? Pull you over. There we go. Now let's get you positioned nicely over here. Very nice. And of course, got to get another. And I think I'm okay with the red paneling up over there. Though, not so okay with the sticky out bit. Official industry term, sticky outy bit. There we go. And the other side, as long as it's consistent on, on the sides, right? Cool, so that should prevent the climbing, and that should make a world of difference. And the thing is, so it was pointed out to me... Oh, let me just double-check here. Done, 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 
done cool and on the outside done and done and done and done okay cool 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 it was also pointed out to me that there is new glass and i could have sworn i looked it up and i was looking for it there's new glass apparently that is frameless and that's what i was hoping to use because i saw a mention in the comments and i was like oh that's amazing because that will look a lot prettier but i don't know what to search for it um window window just gives us these like holes in the wall literally um some of y'all said it came with the latest expansion but if i take a look at um south america pack all i see is all the you know specifically south america style stuff uh so if you know exactly where the glass is and what i should search to get it and please let me know like i don't know if it's frameless or if it's um like, I could search all the walls, but I don't know if it's a wall type. So, yeah, I, um, I mean, if uh, if you have a search term that I should use to find that, that would be great, because it will uh, it will definitely help me um, make this area look a lot nicer. Oh, is it this? Is it glass pane? There's still a bit of a frame, but I guess that's a lot nicer than... I mean, I don't know if it's a lot nicer. It's pretty similar, actually. But it might be worth swapping over. I don't mind how the modern one looks. Oh, that's a fair... Uh, that would be a lot nicer. That would be a lot nicer. That's a much bigger piece. Okay, I think I found it. So, glass pane is what it's called. And it looks like it is transparent. So it's not like it's going to block views or anything like that. Oh no, this is from the base game. Maybe it was just added with the update, like for free. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, enough time spent there. It's time to hit play. <laughs> let time move forward a little bit. Um, let the sun rise, and then we'll get to our time lapse, which, again, happening a little bit later than I'd initially anticipated. Xiao Dan is hungry. Why are you hungry? Is there no food here? Why are you not being feed? feed? Why are you not being feed? Why are you not being fed? Is what I meant to say. You've got to be headed towards... Feeding area, right? So funny. Shared food and stuff. Dangerous. Dangerous fighting. Oh, hey, there's that patch. So there was a new uh, update. Excuse me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It sounds so aggressive. Alright, hold on. Well, let's pause for a second here. 75, 83, 33, 33. 183567. So Bayarma gets to stay, I think. Unless unless that's inbreeding. There we go. So we can bring uh Otgon Bayar back in and their babies are going to be What's up with the fertility variants here? They're not related. Well hold on, let's look at the stud book here. So Bayarma is not in any way related to Otgon Bayar, I forget his name. It's just so neat that the game has this. Um, Sorry, yeah, so that, that's kind of strange, but fair enough. Let's go ahead and check on our other male in here. Um, all right, the easiest way to do it would be this. Or rather, I don't know who's in here. So you're infertile as well from age i take it all right well that's nice because that allows us to rehome um she does have an injury but when we rehome her she'll be taken care of obviously so let's go ahead and do that i like the option of rehoming i don't care how much it costs i'm glad it is a thing um so that's that taken care of and where is our other friend here arbon what are you looking like here oh those are good genes Yeah, this... Ah. Tough. 92, Not sure about this. But let's see, the end result. 
kind of weird that this inbreeding results in a higher size potential. But I think, um, let's see, 92, 75, 67, 67. I don't know if that was the best trade. I think I, I rushed that trade a little bit. But, I mean, appeal-wise, Utgun Bayar is better. So, fair enough. Uh, Arban, we will send you into, I think, trade. Or we could keep him in cycle breeding a bit. Um, might not be a bad idea. Near the trade center. And let's go ahead and bring our animal storage. We're looking for a snow leopard, right? Look, what's the animal again? A snow leopard. Where are you, buddy? Snow leopard, there you are. Utgun Bayar. Yeah, Naran Bator over here. The name always reminds me of Ulan Bator, um, which I suppose is fitting. I mean, these guys are all viable trade options, really. So, okay, fine. Otkan Bayar, let's go ahead and move you. Move you. Over to Katmandu. 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 Uh, well, I guess for the sake of the pun, it is Katmandu. Uh, I wish you could rename animals over here, but you can't. But uh, let it be known that all the... Uh, you know what? I'll say that, but I'll immediately forget when the time actually comes. All of our snow leopards are for trading. Now, you might be wondering, part Party. Party, you're already here. Just trade them. Just trade them right now. Yes, I am already here. But I want to get to the time lapse. And I'm trying to minimize the distractions. I already took too long with that opening, and that's my bad. Uh, we'll, I think we'll trade them next session. I think next session has to be the trading one. So, Arban, you're good for trade. And I'm just marking these so, like, I'll remember when the time comes. I'm not hesitating and going, Oh, was, was this one supposed to be traded? I can't remember. Let me check the genes again and... Take 20 minutes. Um, Altan Sarnai, is that the... No, hold on. I, I marked one of, the wrong, one of the wrong trade options. You are actually going to be the mum. There we go. Back to the zoo. We can actually unpause now because they're not fighting or anything. Um, but yeah, as I do this, I just want to say as well, yeah, so there was a new patch that came out, I think, yesterday or day before based on when you're, you know, my recording versus my releasing this video. Uh, and time zones, but um, there was a recent patch that I think finally fixed that uh, alert issue with uh, fighting. So the devs have heard us, which is always great to see. Always great to see. There we go. Cool. So our bond is. Why do I? How do I keep messing this up? Hold on. Arban's the one who's being brought in, no? Right? One of those days. One of those days. No, Utgun Bayar's the one being brought in. You'd think a name like that would kind of stick in my mind, right? You'd think. Okay, back, back to these Snow Leopards. It is definitely one of those days. Still, still recovering from my recent uh, circumstances. Yeah, okay, you are. I read that and I immediately thought, oh, in transit to the Trade Center because I saw the box. Uh, right. Arban was the one who was here. Okay, cool. Done. Wow, that took forever. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that our lady here is off of the contraceptives. Done. Cool. What is this escaped animal? Willoughby has gotten out. How do they do this? How does this make any sense? This, is this isn't the first time. Nobody's worried or anything. Just running around. Nobody cares. It like climbed through the barrier. And I don't get it. Spend a little bit of money, sure. These guys are still unhappy over here, stressing out. Uh, the, there was another suggestion that came through to put um, hard shelter in... Uh, in like hidden spots that might do the trick might be a worthwhile experiment a worthwhile one last attempt as it were perhaps 
I mean, I could totally duplicate one of these. Alright, get rid of you. Get rid of you. And you in my selection. Come on now. Okay, everything else can come with. Yeah, including the bedding. Get rid of you. Actually, let's keep you. Alright, if I were to duplicate that... Oh, of course I can't. Because it's all these architectural pieces and stuff. Alright, you know, we'll we'll maybe deal with that some other time. But that, that was another suggestion that came through is like... Oh, we could just group it, I guess. Or save it as a blueprint. Which might crash the game. The thing is, I'm pretty sure this is private enough, though. If we take a look at their... Oh, hello. They are stressed out over here. But you're okay. You're closer to the people. How are you more okay? Right, what if we... Well, let me try something here. Make this area a bit more sneaky. Make it a bit more hidey, right? That might do the trick. Maybe. Maybe it's this we could cover up a little bit. Add these little screening plants. Now, screening plants, the game often gives like... Well, the game always gives tips in the loading screen, and screening plants is one that comes up every once in a while as like a way to reduce stress. What's going on here? Um, and it worked for our tortoises, you'll remember. It worked for our tortoises. But I wonder if it'll work for our flamingos as well. We could also consider... Editing this barrier. And making it a little bit taller on the outside here. Maybe that's been a big part of the problem. Wouldn't get you right up to, let's say... Sure. Basically as high as we can get it. Same thing over here. Let's get you to match up, please. 2.17. Over here, we've got the uh, one-way glass. Let's see if that does the trick. I mean, that might actually do what we needed to. We'll see. And let's see if it has any immediate effect. Maybe. It's so hard to tell. Everyone over here pretending like they can see the animals. Education here is terrible. I mean, I guess if people are going to stop here, I might as well make it a better spot, right? Otherwise, we're just lowering our education rating and stuff. Go ahead and drop you down over here. There's a speaker. There is not. Go ahead and get one. Sign you properly. There we go. And I mean, if we're going to put a speaker down. I don't think the uh, education speakers, by the way, add to stress from the looks of it. While it makes sense for it to, I don't think it actually happens. Dangerous find you to overcrowding. Okay, got to fix that. Where are my flamingo donation bins? Just want to get this done quickly. There we go. Oh my god, they make so much money. They make so much money. Move you over to here. There we go. That makes sense. All right, now. Pronghorn antelope. Not having a good time. Due to overcrowding. This is going to be interesting. This is always an interesting adventure. How many males do we have over here? You. You. Wakefield is fine. Yeah, the rest of them are juvenile, I take it. Or, what, in the Trade Center? Yeah, let's go ahead and release you to the wild. There we go. Hopefully that'll solve the problem here. Looks like it did. Vet research complete. What have we got going on here? Reindeer and the Japanese macaque. Nice. Dangerous animals escaped. I'm going to have to check in on that. Let's go ahead and get... Um, Additional research going on what? For like the educational help. Platinum, let's get you on the snow leopards. Cool. They're not dangerous. 
How did you get out? Did they update the path thing again, or is there a sneaky spot over here somewhere? Relax, people. Relax. They've been they've been captured. You're okay. You're okay. You're not in trouble. Keep uh, keep donating, please and thank you. I just skating by on Heelys. What are we looking at here? Where are any of the other orangutan? There we go. Hello. Hiding from the rain. Let's take a quick peek over here. When did this happen? These are the changes I could do without. When did this happen? Okay, so this is all because they have access to this area. Question is, from where? From where? And do we just solve it by, um... Putting down some more glass. Like we could extend the coverage of the uh, of the glass a little bit, I suppose. Let's see. What if I? What if I do this kind of a thing? Or we move you down a little bit, because I wouldn't be surprised if right now. They can clip through, so let's drop you down to here. Right. And then let's go ahead and... Where are you... Why are you running? Super tired. There's benches everywhere. I want to see what they do when they're super tired. Run, apparently. Apparently, that's, that's what I like to do when I'm super tired. I mean, they're probably running because of the rain. Oh, man. Oh, wow, look at how crowded Bangkok Market is. It's always a joy to, like, come through and, uh, fleeing. Oh, that's why they're running. I guess something did escape. Didn't see a notification, but maybe it was temporary. Alright. Nonetheless, I'm back to trying to solve this problem here. So we've got you. Okay. Uh, we could... As I was saying, move this out a little bit bigger. Because then what we could do is... Um, I want to reduce the grid size, please. And what we could do is we could have it go up on either side as well. Do like this kind of a thing, maybe. Helps to be on the same side. And again, just like doing this stuff while the weather is poor, right? Ah, poor. Because it's raining. And it stopped. Alright, well if it stopped, we're going to pause it over here. I just want to quickly do this because we're in the middle of it. I'm going to put you down over there. Okay. Will that solve the problem? Where's our baby? You're not our baby, you're our baby. Look at that little troublemaker. Enrichment, by the way, is looking okay. Um, not bored or anything. Oh my god, what a cutie. Those eyes, though. Completely black. Ah, uh, okay. I want to see. We unpause. Momentarily. Come on now. Come on now. Still able to get out. Alright, okay, okay, okay. Not a problem, not a problem, not a problem. Not a problem. The, the thing is that they're able to get down here, which is why they're able to get out. Guess because they can climb across this. And then jump off from there. That might be it. That might be it. 
guess I could raise this higher. Check if that's the problem. Yeah, I'll still need some adjusting, unfortunately. We've got this as well. I just wish <laughs> old projects wouldn't break. Oh. Nope, nope. I said nope. There we go. Oh, great. Everything deselected. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, you know what, folks? Um... This is a problem I think we'll solve maybe after the time lapse. Maybe not even this session. I've waited long enough to dive into the time lapse. I wanted to do it right at the beginning, and here we are, closer to the end. My apologies again. I really, I really don't like uh, setting the wrong expectations ever. Uh, this is a problem, though. This definitely needs to be solved. Gonna keep the glass paint out over here. The other option, of course, is to very quickly. Nope, because we can't even flip these around to be standing. Great. I'll have to put down the wall pieces over here. But we can, we can do that. We can build a glass wall over here if necessary, and hopefully that'll do the trick. Just a bit of a bummer as far as the aesthetic is concerned, but hey, those are the risks that we run when we try this kind of stuff. Uh, one more thing actually I want to touch on before we dive into this time lapse is that there was a suggestion of not just turning this into a wolf enclosure. I know, touching on a topic we stopped talking about a long time ago, but it just occurred to me. Uh, not just turning this into a wolf enclosure, but maybe perhaps having the path going over here instead so guests can get more views of the uh, polar bears as well over here. And then what I might actually do is get a gondola ride to get people from here to here as well. It's a nice curved gondola ride that uh, just becomes another way to make some you know revenue, but also to get guests over to the doll sheep more uh, readily and more easily. So that's that's the running theory and plan right now is we're going to actually make this into the Arctic Wolf section, get the gondola ride in, move where the path is, and uh, and that'll be our Arctic area done well you know ish animal wise it'll be done anyway segue into non-animal arctic stuff time to kick off our beauty pass take care of this stuff over here and then uh well and then lots more there's a lot to do folks let's uh <laughs> let's dive on in all right folks this is going to be a hefty time lapse we get a fair bit done actually i'm really happy with the results of this time lapse the first thing is a bit of a setback but we get over it pretty quickly i think um turns out that uh the, the terrain solution that had been suggested to me is just it doesn't work I don't, I don't know i don't know if it's just me i don't know if it's just my luck or if uh there was a misunderstanding in the comments or something but Either way, uh, I cannot build a mound around these things, even with the path removed and everything. So, uh, check my settings and everything. Instead, we're just going to have to uh, work around it. Unentirely intended, of course. And working around it is perfectly fine by me. So, just as a reminder, and again, uh, folks, if I get this wrong, those of you who are more um, aware and attuned to the topics upon which I speak, feel free to share, because uh, everything I say isn't and nor should it ever be considered gospel. You just, uh, <laughs> just you know, note that. Uh, so, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this what we're building here is the, a a type of Sami um, structure called the Goati. Goat Goati. I'm think I think it's Goati. Uh, again, correct me if my pronunciation is is incorrect or if I'm uh, using the wrong name because they have uh, multiple. Uh, housing types because there's also the the uh, lavu which is the tent structures you can see back there and the tent structures that are currently hovering above our heads uh, but the uh, I, I found this to be a more compelling structure even when we put the tents down and you know we kind of talked about it briefly feels like forever ago now but um, the, the tents while I like how they look for you know inside the enclosure and while I like how they look in general uh, I just felt as though that massive gap around the actual stall didn't really work and we'd have to rework the angles and I don't think it would work actually. Even if we rework the angles, you'd have to basically have a section of the tent be going straight upright, uh, which isn't what the actual structures look like. So that's one thing. The other thing is I feel like these ones just look a little bit more interesting. Uh, we've got already so many of the uh, other kind in the enclosure already do we really need more of the same i mean 
it, they looked fine, don't get me wrong, but uh, Varieties of Spice of Life, right? We only have one of these in the enclosure, and it's also kind of tucked away. I really like that it's this little, like, hidey hole, almost. So this is an opportunity for this style of uh, structure to shine and, and be the focal point. Uh, I do really like those, uh, I forget which kind of bush it is, a crowberry bush, I want to say? I can't remember. Yeah, crowberry bush it looks like. Uh, I really like how nicely that, like, fits together and feels so very dense. Um, and, and and we do go in every once in a while and finesse just how it's kind of stacked and how it curves. The problem is that it's a very big, um, like, it's, it's not big as in bushy, it's big as in it covers over a large flat surface area. And, and so the one unfortunate thing about it is that it does need to be kind of like nudged in nuance to feel like it's clumped together. Otherwise it feels like, I don't know, stray, I don't know, like a, like stray hair is just hanging off the edge of a, of a, uh, a well, of a head, I guess. But, um, we work around it pretty well. I'm, I'm actually quite satisfied with this. Like I said, it started with a, a setback, that setback being the fact that the terrain, um, uh, the, the, the uh, being allowed to modify the terrain around the uh, structures is not a thing. But hey, we worked around that pretty quickly, I think. And then, of course, still, you know, building that central, like, fireplace area um, and making sure that people are uh, having, like, a, a place to congregate. Now, I don't know if I'll actually put benches down. I don't put benches down in the time lapse because, like, you'll see, I experiment with them a little bit. I don't really know if I like how they look necessarily. I wish the game had like little log benches um because that's what i go for ultimately and and you'll see in just a moment's time i put down a bunch of little uh little tree stumps log benches tree stumps um just feels like it feels aesthetically right the and i think i've i've brought this up before i find that the benches are don't get me wrong they're beautiful across all the cultures are beautiful um or across all the themes i guess they're they're, they're beautiful but but they're a little gaudy. Uh, and I mean that in more ways than one. You know, like the uh, there's the Indian uh, one that has the purple cushioning. That one just super vibrant colors. It looks weird. Uh, the Arctic ones are both very like intricate woodwork and stuff. I was like, no, sometimes I just I just want a tree stump that people can sit on. Um, you can see them down here. The, the, the New World one is, I would say, the only one that's super like minimal in a nice way. Um, and then there's also one of the East Asia ones, but it's also very clearly an East Asian thing. Uh, so it's not like I could pull it over here, but it would be nice to have some simpler options as well. Just my two cents. Uh, but with that aside, we did turn all of the uh, soil atop these uh, structures into long grass. I'm hoping that that would help fill things out a bit more. And I just like to go in and add some trees as well. I try to, uh, again, I try to keep feedback in mind at all times. So I try to look for alternative trees that we haven't used while at the same time maintaining a, a nice color palette and things like that. I really need to figure out what to do over here because the, the plan now, I guess, is to get the Arctic wolves in that long running area. Do we pull that long running area to the empty space behind our uh, little structures over here? Now, we have some time to think about that because, again, just as a reminder, folks, the next session, uh, we should be adding a new animal, sorry, and the animal will probably be the Formosan black bear, an animal we've talked about for a very long time. We're going to build our little Taiwan section, and I need to figure out what to do. Now, I'm going to go for a natural approach. I've seen uh, that feedback a lot, and I wholeheartedly agree with it. I've been doing too many architectural and structural uh, enclosures. I want to do more natural ones. Like I like the the Sammy one, the the the, the reindeer one. I feel like that's a good balance between things. Uh, I like the uh, future wolf one as well, but uh, more on that later. For now, let's get to our sponsor board. So the first one over there was for the polar bears, and that was Ressa. Over here, we're adding the uh, a second one for our timber wolves, and that's Sebastian. I just want to say really quickly, I apologize if I'm butchering any pronunciations. Feel free to correct me in the comments, of course. Um, I, I try my best, um, so I so I do apologize if I'm if I'm still uh, messing them up a little bit. But uh, uh, using my my best uh, detective skills, my my best guesswork, if you will. Uh, now over here for our uh, elephants, we've got ourselves Gabby Rocha, uh, Rocha, 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 soft ch. There's so many variants out there, right? <laughs> but. Uh, you know, hopefully I got it right, feel free to correct me. And then, uh, yeah, I was just trying to figure out exactly where I want to place these as well and how I want to style all of them. Um, trying to keep them, trying to keep the aesthetics matching 
like it, it's a it's a whole game of similar but different at at, at some places. Uh, whereas, for example, for Flamingo Park for, for the Flamingos, uh, building a completely new style. So this one is going to feel completely different from anything else. Whereas the two Indian ones have some similar elements, though slightly uh, differentiated as well. Uh, so for the Flamingos in Flamingo Park, which I certainly hope we're able to keep as a mingling park, uh, you're going to see me experiment with, I don't know why I decided to do this. I'm really happy with how it ends, but uh, but uh, the opening act of this, uh, of this sponsor board, uh, I made some silly decisions with regards to the <laughs> board I use, as you can see over here. It just doesn't work. It doesn't want to fit. Um, that's another thing I wish we had. It was just like an editable text box. Just let me put text down as a as a as a decal, so I can just flatten it on top of anything. Uh, nonetheless, Cold Brew Barbie is our uh, is our flamingo sponsor, and uh, I'm I actually really like the structure we end up building over here for other uses as well. I might actually use the uh, the piece because you'll see we end up using some of the trim. So we're using the uh, fancy. Oh, I don't even know what it's called pillar base, I guess, and then using the trim on top of it to, to create a frame. And then uh, that was me just referencing the, the font. Oh, no, I actually want to pull this over because I felt like it worked a bit nicer because of how it um, the parts that stick out versus the parts that don't. Again, if we just had a text box we could use, uh, we wouldn't have that problem. Anyway, yeah, so using the trim and then hiding parts of the trim inside and flipping it you know, around to, to create like a framing device for each of the names as well. And then again, little uh, trick I believe I implement over here is if you add just spaces on either side of the name, you can actually just uh, shrink it a little bit. Oh, you know what? I need to go back in and do that because it's just a little too close to the edges. It's not so much about the size of the name. It's just that I like to have a little bit of breathing room, a little bit of negative space is always nice. And so I need to, I need to remember to go in and, and edit that one. Uh, maybe we'll do it during the next like beauty pass uh, session or whatever. Um, but then over here, we have our panda. So I had, I had some fun, uh, like, uh, in, in my head with this one. So, uh, we've got, uh, Simon Jub or Simon Yub, not hundred percent sure. Feel free to correct me. Corianne, Corianne Weedman and Lauren Jane. And if I butchered any, let me know. And then the red pandas, we have, uh, Tara Silky. And the, the the fun I was having with that is that uh, I was trying to figure out like, okay, what do we do for the red pandas that's different, but feels like it's still part of, you know, East Asia and whatnot. How do we differentiate? And then I was like, wait a second, it shouldn't be different. They both lay claim to the name panda. It should be the same. It should just be a part of that same fight they're fighting. Um, so that was just, I don't know, in my head, I was like, it, uh, you know, when you exhale sharply through your nose because someone said something funny, but you know, it wasn't like haha funny. It was more like, like a chortle funny. Yeah, I had I had a moment like that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I like the whole panda thing we've got going on. Um, but yeah, we are also now setting up one for the reindeers, and our reindeer sponsor is uh, Janaimona, 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 Janaimona. I'm not 100 percent sure which one of those was correct, or were they all wrong? It could also be not a not a ja sound. It could be a ya sound. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm genuinely sorry, but do feel free to correct me so I can get it right the next time. Um, then we move on to right the uh, the Japanese macaque. And here, uh, again, I'm always trying to do something interesting with the sponsor boards, either from like a visual perspective or from an interactive perspective. And here I thought it'd be really cool to have the sponsor boards actually be a part of the uh, climbing grid or lattice or the... Uh, I don't want to call them monkey bars. <laughs> They're not going to be monkey bars, but uh, the jungle gym, I guess. Um, I, I wanted it to be a part of the structure that we want to build over here. Because this is a reminder, we want to have like the climbing platforms be a part of like the uh, you know, rafters, as it were, have an overhead section over here. So Isaac Cunningham here is uh, is the, the sponsor there who's holding up the first couple of posts for what will hopefully be a pretty intricate climbing play space for our, uh, for our little... Uh, monkey friends up there uh meanwhile over here we've got for our himalayan brown bear a new addition in well what do i say the name as it gets typed out because the time lapse isn't giving me as much time as i thought i would have oh there we go emilia young <laughs> almost missed it um but yeah so we've got emilia young there sponsoring the himalayan brown bear and then back over here for the grizzly bears uh took a lot of time actually contemplating where and how i want to place this one uh 
it's funny how many viewing spots there are for the the uh the grizzly bears um but yeah you can kind of see me like wondering like okay do we go overland close to where the wolves are or do we pull further away to uh um to like to the other viewing like curved viewing path area or do we go underground there's so many spots to view from and i, I play around with some ideas um trying to figure out again like what works best what's uh what's best for like traffic and things like that as well ultimately i decided to go up over here and uh, i don't want it to feel too arctic uh for uh for the grizzly bears because we've got that for the timberwolves right but i do want it to have like a bit of a rustic feel and the arctic pieces do give us uh some of that feel that i'm hoping for and and looking for so just gonna use a couple of their pieces together to hopefully make something that feels that kind of rust rustic but without uh, feeling you know too definitively arctic so to speak but our sponsor here for the grizzly bears is frank elliott um and that i believe that's the last uh, sponsor board we add today i just want to mention really quickly again folks if i missed your request then i do apologize sincerely it might have happened because youtube threw something in spam maybe i missed a message um I tend to, again, as somebody who's often very sleep deprived, I tend to sometimes check messages when I, I don't realize I'm checking messages. Uh, and so the notification goes away, but the message doesn't actually, you know, quote unquote, register. So I apologize if that's happened sincerely. Just remind me and uh, I will make sure we get it done next time. But folks, that's the time lapse today. All right, folks, we are back. And that was, I would say, a very productive time lapse. Um, we got a fair bit done. Um, again, got all of our kind of uh, sponsor boards and stuff done. Got the uh, reindeer, uh, uh, calling it the enclosure is not right. Call, uh, the the reindeer attached vendor stalls and all done. Like the beauty pass up over here is done. We ran out of time before we could dive into our wayfinding. Um, almost at pathfinding. Our wayfinding. Uh, work over here which i'm not surprised i always end up finding a way to just do uh way more than uh than i'd set time aside for and uh, and we went well over what i was uh what i thought we would go as is sort of become tradition now for this uh for this let's play hasn't it um so yeah really happy with uh, how things have turned out overall uh again a huge thanks to everybody that's been kind of supporting this channel whether it's through patreon or channel membership or through viewing and commenting and liking and subscribing and sharing i appreciate all that support it really does mean a lot uh in so many more ways than i can express words words are not enough <laughs> words are not enough uh unfortunately the other thing that there isn't enough of is time folks i think we're actually gonna call it a session right now mainly because we've we've reached a bit of a point of conclusion in many aspects uh the only i guess hanging thing is this little orangutan enclosure i mean i guess i could dive in here and try to fix this the thing is i don't want to cobble this together i hate cobbling stuff together um i'd much rather really spend some time and think about it it, it, it could be the clipping over here though the clipping wasn't a problem before it could be the fact that they can jump off over here really the uh the core issue with these cuties is that they're able to get down here and i can't tell from where because it doesn't count doesn't count jumping off as an escape right and i mean hey it could actually be from countless other spots that they're able to uh escape over here but uh this definitely needs a little bit of work and i do hope it's not got anything to do with clipping because i'm pretty happy with how this looks and how it works i don't want them to it says they can't climb this area but we know very well that they can actually hang on a second it looks like they can't anymore no way. When did that happen? Like, they're that's why they're using this so much more often, I guess. Alright, what's uh, what's this kind of escape? Jumpable escape point. So they're able to jump here from, I assume, up there? Maybe? Hmm. And they can jump down here. Is that when they can get in and around here? I wouldn't count this as accessible, would it? Okay, okay. Well, that's good to know at least that uh, one of these is a jumpable point. Nonetheless, uh, 
what I was getting at is uh, that there isn't much to just like wrap up or anything. This is a bit of an undertaking. Anything else that we get to now is going to be a bit of an undertaking, and I don't want to start anything else that we won't be able to finish right now. I already feel bad enough about uh, this, but I think we'll wrap this up at the top of the next episode. I think top of the next episode, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to go ahead and go through our trade center. Again, we have lots of animals in storage. Um, with the filter, it doesn't look so impressive but uh, without the filter 46 animals in storage everything from chinese pangolin that we can't have because it would be inbreeding yes okay just wanted to make sure um everything from chinese pangolin to some pronghorn antelope we've got some uh red pandas as well snow leopards lots of bengal tigers lots of good quality jeans good to go as well so we're gonna go ahead and uh yeah kick things off nice and early with a lot of komodo dragons that's the thing this uh and again just as a reminder uh i'm gonna probably tweet out when i'm planning on doing all the trades so if you want to pick some of these animals up if you like their stats or if you like uh the animal or if you just want to you know continue the uh <laughs> the legacy if you will of elite zoo in your own zoos and whatnot uh, i will send a tweet out so uh you'll be able to find these animals at that time on the uh marketplace should be fun i think it's a fun little community kind of thing uh nonetheless back to what i was saying earlier which is farewell folks this is what we're gonna call it if you enjoyed you know what to do let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below as always it makes a massive difference in how i approach content on the channel on the topic of massive a massive thanks once again to all my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis and of course to each and every one of you for watching along and uh, just joining in we had a good time until next time, cheers.